Hi, I'm Charlie Thorburn. Welcome to Mordor Gundogs. This week, we are going to talk about the controversial topic of the electric shock collar, the e-collar, whatever you want to call it. Now, it's quite an interesting thing because um, the UK and the US are both big, big dog-loving countries. I mean, I, in my experience, the two main dog-loving countries. Um, we treat our dogs better than anyone else over here and you guys in America, I think even more so. But the big difference is in this country, in the UK, I think in, in Wales, the electric shock collar is banned. I think Scotland, it is heading for being banned. Um, and certainly in England, it is it's definitely, you know, very much frowned upon. Um, people have a real aversion to them. Whereas in the US, especially in hunting dog training, gun dog training, they're pretty commonly used. It's just part of the daily course. You almost find that trainers over there use them uh, too much. They just use them because that's the tool they use. That's the one they've grown They've grown up knowing you train a dog using a using a shock collar. Um, so people often ask me, what's my view on them? Um, and my view is basically, and you know, there was a gentleman called Keith Erlinson, who's no longer alive. And, and many years ago, he, he wrote a book and he did a lot of dog training. And he said, in theory, a shock collar is a, is a, a very useful training tool. But anyone who knows how to train dogs shouldn't really need to use one. And anyone who doesn't know how to train dogs shouldn't be allowed to use one. And I completely agree with that. Because what I've seen is people who don't know how to use one and they've got a naughty dog and they're just pressing it hard and like it's a TV control that is parking. And they're trying to get the dog to listen but they haven't actually trained the dog what the behavior is they're expecting. And they're just punishing the dog and the dog's running around and just getting electrocuted, doesn't know what it's being electrocuted for no one has a clue the whole thing's a bloody shambles i remember years and years ago being out on a on a hill and someone's dog was running along and every so often it would go yep and it would jump about three feet in the air and i was watching this dog thinking well, what on earth is wrong with that dog initially i thought maybe it just got bitten by you know an adder or, or something and then it did it again and then it did it again and i said to the owners i saw the person next to me it was obviously their dog and i said to them i said what's wrong with your dog and they were like, oh, we're zapping him. They literally were just pressing the button on the remote control, wondering why it wasn't working. I, I mean, what a shoot, you know, seriously, I wanted to throw them in the river and, and take the dog home with me. The dog had not been taught how to behave. You can't punish a dog. You can't punish anybody if they don't know what the rules are. If you go to a foreign country and you get done for speeding, you know, and you don't know what the what the uh, what the speeding rules are. You know, you need to find out. You need to get that information in advance. If you're training a dog, you need to teach them what the rules are before you can start telling them off for not listening to you. you can't just yell at a dog or electrocute a dog because it's not listening. You've got to make sure it understands and it's actually not listening because it does that to you and goes, "I'm off in the other direction because I know what I'm meant to do, but I don't care." And then that's different. They understand, but you've got to be a hundred percent sure. And basically, amateur traders who don't really know what they're doing probably don't have that knowledge or skill set enough to justify using one of these. The other side of it is is those who know how to train dogs shouldn't need to use them. If we brought up one of our own dogs in a controlled environment like we do when we're bringing them up, and I had to resort to using one of these collars, something's gone really wrong with my training. The upbringing of the dog, there's something something missing. Like, I've really, really messed up. There's a problem. Because if you bring up a dog in the right way, there is no need to punish them to that, that degree. It's just totally unnecessary. However, however, and this is where this is where I guess I could be some of the kind of the, the real sort of do-gooders would, would crucify me. And I will say there is a time and a place for them. And that time and a place is for when you're trying to save a dog's life. What do I mean by that? That sounds a bit extreme. If you've got a dog who is a serial sheep killer or a running off after deer incessantly and has done for a, a while and it's going to end up getting run over or, or something along those lines, then there's a situation for one of these collars because essentially if you don't do something pretty drastic, that dog's going to die. 
because it's going to be shot by a farmer. It's going to have to be put down by the owner or something along those lines because the dog just has got its blood thirst. It's done it. It's done it too many times. It is not fixable. And I'll talk about this in other videos, but there are there are situations where dogs are not fixable with just training or 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 um or management. You know, they they you have to take a more extreme case. Whether that's, I suppose it's a bit like humans. You know, some people are they make mistakes and they they get punished for their crime and they get out of. There are some people who are just not right in the head, and they there are dogs like that as well. But a dog like that is not going to be fixed with a, a shot collar. A dog like that is just not right in the head, and they're never going to be they're never going to be fixed. And the point is, you can't save all of them. But if a dog is generally a well behaved, well mannered dog, reasonably well behaved and well mannered, and it's a nice dog in every in every other situation, but as soon as it's in a field of sheep or anywhere near a sheep, it just chases after them and rips their throat out. Then, under the right supervision with the right person who knows what they're doing, there is a place. There is a place for, for one of these because it will mean that that dog doesn't have to spend the rest of its life on a lead. In America, you guys train dogs primarily using a shot collar. Not all of you, but hunting dogs generally, they they um you condition the dog to the shot collar from a very young age. It is a normal part of daily life. Like we use a slip lead, you will use a shot collar. In, not to do the same job, but to... To, as a daily part of your training we always have a slip lead in our pocket you always have an electric collar in your pocket inherently i think this is this is wrong um and i think quite a lot of our customers who buy dogs from us think this is wrong as well which is why we have a lot of dogs in in america and the reason i think it's wrong is is because if a dog wants to do something and it's keen to be trained and it wants to be trained and it wants to do a good job there isn't any need to uh, to tell them off just so that they get used to being told off it just doesn't make any sense and i would love to have a conversation with someone in america who's a top trainer who uses an electric collar and i would love them to argue their their point with me because i would be fascinated to hear their point of view and i'm very much of the view of just because i think something doesn't mean that that's right so if someone could convince me that what they were doing was correct um then then it would be it would be an interesting conversation maybe we'll put it on a video anger is a strong word but where it causes me a bit of upset i guess is what's happened in this in america with with and i'm going to use labradors particularly because labradors are what we really know about and what we see a lot of they have they have trained labradors to very very high standards using uh the shot collar now there are some dogs i have plenty of dogs in my kennels who if you put one of these on them they would melt away into nothing. They just simply wouldn't do anything. They wouldn't run after a retrieve. They wouldn't jump in a pond. They wouldn't leave your heel because they'd be so upset and potentially getting getting uh, zapped by a, a collar because they're just soft, gentle-natured dogs. Um, you know, some of us can take a bollocking better than others. Some of us are used to getting a bollocking more than others. We're all different. But, but what happens is if you condition dogs to being used to you know, a, quite a severe punishment of a of an electric shock around their neck. Um, then only the fittest, only the strongest survive. And what I mean by that is that the ones that then excel under that pressure and under that strain are the ones who can take it. And they grit their teeth and they go, oh, I'm just going to do it anyway. Or I'm going to do that again tomorrow. And they, and they can cope with that endless pressure of having correction and not knowing when it's going to come necessarily and that entire sort of situation that they're put in so those dogs that can cope with that they excel they become the champions they become the national hunt champion or 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 a field trial champion out in the states so they are then the dogs that are bred from because they're the best inverted commas and what happens over a number of years of breeding and, and, and selective uh, breeding is that you take away the soft, gentle ones that can't cope with the pressure and you only breed from the hard, headstrong ones that can cope with the pressure. And then you get to the point where the dogs are so strong-willed that they can only be trained with one of these because they're just ready to go all the time. They don't have that biddable soft side that that our dogs particularly um have and and generally dogs in the uk have more uh, labradors in the uk have more of so you've got these dogs that have been 
pushed to extreme limits that, that most of us couldn't handle. What we've got to think more about is the normal run-of-the-mill dogs or normal run-of-the-mill people who want normal run-of-the-mill dogs who don't necessarily want a champion. But if the only options of bloodlines are coming off these champions who've all been trained with these, they end up with these strong-willed dogs that simply can't be trained under more gentle or more gentle and encouraging methods. So, should they be banned? No. No, absolutely not. Should any old punter be allowed to buy one in a shop and use it like a TV control? Absolutely bloody not. No. But do they have a place under the right supervision and the right the right control, the right person? I think they do. How you how you manage that, how you um how you regulate that, that's a different question. And that is definitely not one to uh, to start in this video. But that's that's my opinion of them. Have I ever used one occasionally? Yes. Not with one of our own dogs, but with a dog that's come for remedial training and they've they've, you know, had some serious problems and we've we've helped the owners use a use a collar. They've come with a collar and we've shown them how to use it properly. Is it something that I promote? Absolutely not, because I don't think most people should even consider it. Um but you've got to look at it not just from a hugging your dog i love my dog dearly that's mean you are you know i've put one of these around my around my arm i've put one of these around my neck they bloody hurt they bloody wake you up but it's not going to kill you it's not going to kill your dog but if your dog is a killer of sheep or something else and you haven't put in the time then essentially you've allowed that to happen and and you know the dog has got to that point because the owner has mad, badly managed it and some extreme cases you know you have to take some drastic measures. I hope this has been helpful or interesting. I'm sure there'll be lots of comments and lots of questions um, about this. And uh, and I look forward to, to hearing from you. Remember, you get out what you put in. Thanks for watching.